different times. Live in the moment. And if, you know, I, I talk with families and I counsel them and I say, if them repeating the same story 20 times is beginning to make you crazy, have them embellish that story. You know, if somebody says, uh, I, I was a cook in the army and they, they want to tell you about being a cook in the army, then talk about, you know, what did you cook? Where did you get those rations? Why did they have so many potatoes when you were in the army? As opposed to listening to the same thing over and over again. And you can certainly, you know, broaden the conversation into something else about a nephew who's going into the army and how exciting that must be and how homesick he might get. Just to see if they can talk about it. As opposed to saying, we just talked about that. We just went there. Another thing that we talk about all the time is not giving somebody with Alzheimer's disease or dementia too many choices. If you're in a restaurant, what you don't want to do is say, do you want iced tea or do you want milk? Or would you like Coke? Or would you like Sprite? Or would you like a milkshake? (laughs) And this used to happen in my family all the time with my father-in-law. My mother-in-law drank coffee and that's all she drank. So when we're at the restaurant, let's just order her coffee because it's not going to change. Same thing with getting dressed in the morning. Let's not, you know, say, do you want the high heels? Do you want the espadilles? Do you want the sandals? Put out two pairs of shoes. Would they like to wear the white ones or the red ones today? Because it's too much stimulation. Just I think it's too much stimulation for me. I absolutely. Mean, you know, <laughs> my mother used to say to me all the time, it wasn't difficult to decide what to wear because I only had two dresses in the closet. There you go. <laughs> you know, yeah. but I, you know, I, I also, um, you have just um, brought up a point which I really didn't didn't know about. So you really can have a good conversation with somebody with dementia or Alzheimer's as long as you keep it in the vein that they are talking about. Sure, sure. And what surprises everybody, Dr. Carson, is although somebody is in the fog of Alzheimer's disease and they've been in the fog for years, every once in a while a little door opens and they can spew out the correct thing. Uh, This happened with my mother. She was, you know, just having a very hard time. Uh, She was mid-stage to late Alzheimer's. And it was right at the time when the lead singer from Nirvana, the, the rock group, had committed suicide. And my sister and I happened to be standing in the doorway of the room where my mother was. And we said, isn't it a shame that that singer from Nirvana, you know, committed suicide? That's, that's really sad. And my sister said, what is his name? And out of my mother's 82-year-old mouth in the fog of Alzheimer's disease, she said, Kurt Cobain. You know, I got to tell you something. I just read in this morning uh, that this would have been his 50th birthday. And his daughter said, um, you know, basically, I'm sorry you're not here to so I could experience you. Yeah. But she was very, 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 um, very positive towards him. Yeah. Well, you know, it, that is amazing. See, I never knew those things. That's very important. Yeah. So, so what happens? Here I am. I've taken care of and you have taken care of, um, you know, people with Alzheimer's, a parent. Now, your job is done. Right. What happens? You know, it's, it can be as devastating as being fired from a regular job because you've now devoted most of the hours of your day to caring for a parent. And even your working hours, you're still making calls at lunchtime. You're still calling doctors when you can. And all of a sudden, that's all over. And you have your grief time that they've passed on. But then you have this day and you don't really know what to do about it. And it's it's just like being fired from a job. So that's the time when all the people who have said, I'd really like to do something, I'd really like to help, have those people get in touch with you or, or call them and say, you know, you were so gracious and you wanted to help out with my mom. What if you and I go out for coffee Tuesday and, and invite them? Because we've all experienced this. Sometimes when somebody dies, people are a little reluctant to contact you because they don't know what to say. They've been to the funeral. The other thing is go and volunteer. 
make sure that your days are filled with activities because you really don't know what to do. And this, I, I'm going to say, Dr. Carson, it's harder on men. When men have been caregivers, they're stuck. They're really stuck for a while. So if you can go out and volunteer or go take a pottery class or a class that you've wanted to do for a while, or maybe finally take that trip that you've been putting off because you just couldn't get away, but reconnect into the social life that you had or try something very, very new. Um, grief is different for everybody. There's no set time. So keeping busy is important. And then, you know, maybe for some of those people that offer to help, ask them if they will help you get rid of some of the things that you need to get rid of, some of the clothes, some of the, if there's a house that needs to be broken up. It's always a lot better psychologically and from the heart if we can do these things with other people. Yeah, uh, it's it's really uh, something I hope that our listeners today are getting a lot out of this because it's something that all of us are going to contend with. I mean, I hope that it doesn't happen to my son with me because he would be the one in charge of me because he'll be closer to where I am. But, you know, it's 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 you hope it doesn't happen, but you never know. So I hope that everybody has taken your advice uh, and listened to what we had to say today. Now, you have a, a website, agingparentsolutions.com. Tell That's us correct. what's available for, there for people and uh, if they go there, what they will find. Um, they will find tips on how to get through your average day. There are articles there. There's also a link to get my book, Navigating the Journey of Aging Parents. And there is also my phone number and my email. If somebody would like to call me and, and have cons some consulting, I would be happy to do it. Okay, so listen again, people. This is very, very important. I think this is so, so vital for you. It's agingparentsolutions.com. It's just the way it sounds, agingparentsolutions.com. Cheryl is a gerontologist. She has a background in this. She's had experience in it. She's got training in it. So she's someone who can really help you. And I know that, you know, it's got to be tough. It just is tough when you're going through this and you think it's never going to happen. I guess the question that I also want to leave with is they say that, you know, Alzheimer's leads to death or people die because of Alzheimer's. How does that happen? Um, how it happens is their brain actually forgets to have the other uh, organs in the body do their work. For example, people will forget how to swallow. They will forget that they will just lose interest in eating and or they will just, a lot of people with Alzheimer's disease actually die of pneumonia because they're, their breathing gets labored, and it's it's similar to very much just dying of pneumonia. But they, uh, for many many people, it's their body just starts to shut down because their brain is no longer sending the signals to have these other organs do what they're supposed to do. Wow. Well, of course, we know that many people, uh, older people, do die of pneumonia anyway. That's why you have to be so careful about everything. So the, another thing is just make sure that your parents take care of their health in general, because um, anything can lead to to something that you know you don't want to happen. That's why the falls are critical. Pneumonia is critical. You must do preventive health care. Well, Cheryl, it has been an absolute uh, pleasure today. You have been so informative to us. And again, I want to give your website. It is agingparentsolutions.com. Thanks so much for being with us. I, I, I can't tell you how informative it has been for us. Thank you, Dr. Carson. And I, I just want to add for anybody who has Alzheimer's disease in the family, it's never too late to make new memories. Maybe have that ice cream cone together or the boat ride it's we can make new memories every day fabulous thanks so much cheryl thank you dr carson it's been a pleasure